almost complete. Finally, after almost a decade trapped on this hideous border world, my visual upgrade module is ready to load. Ah, now at least I won't have to look at this nasty place. Here we go. Visual upgrade module loading. Ha ha, wonderful. Only a few more moments and it's finally done. Oh no, more zombies? When will it stop? Oh, here we go. Oh no, depleted ammunition? I guess we'll just have to use Old Faithful. Come on, take that, you monster. That's it, you abomination. And stay down. Oh. Just not cut out for this work. Visual upgrade ready for launch. It's complete. Finally. Here we go. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Well, here goes nothing. Oh my, it worked, it worked, all these years, oh, it's so beautiful, finally, it's absolutely beautiful, after all these years of work, it's just uncanny, wouldn't you say, oh, splendid. What's that? Hello? Professor Gurm? Oh my, a portal? Professor Gurm? Are my eyes deceiving me? Am I seeing a fellow Black Mesa scientist? Mm, that's right, Professor. I'm here to save you. Are you all right? Well, I am now. And it's just wonderful to finally see a familiar face. <laughs> Come on, let's get going. We have a pizza party waiting for you at the research facility. Pizza? Wonderful! Let's go! <sighs> Goodbye, Zen. It's time for pizza! Yo, yo, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Germ, and today I'm talking about Black Mesa. It's been well over a decade in the making by two modding teams that combined their forces to create a Valve-supported remake of Half-Life 1. <laughs> and if it sounds unbelievable, well, that's probably because it's never happened before. Developer Crowbar Collective just released its 1.0 version of Black Mesa, and I just finished it clocking in 21 hours. So how did they do remaking one of gaming history's most influential and iconic games? Well, let's jump in. Crowbar in hand and find out. Tuning in, y'all. And 
Half-Life has been a franchise that I have grown up with like many of you. I was a 15-year-old sophomore in high school when Half-Life 1 dropped. It was 1998, and if I wasn't skateboarding, listening to Tool's Onum album, or chasing after my amazing partner of 22 years now, then I was playing Half-Life. <laughs> That's some old school shit, yo, and I know that many of you have your own stories just like me. Half-Life defined gameplay standards and revolutionized FPS storytelling. And most importantly for me, it was one of the first games that I felt like I was playing in a fully realized first person world that deeply immersed me. Before Deus Ex, before Thief 2, before Halo, before Return to Castle Wolfenstein, before Red Faction, and before Far Cry. <laughs> the list goes on and on. So when I heard two modding teams were pooling their resources to make a Half-Life remake, I was pumped. It took them a long ass time, and I intentionally stayed away from all early access and beta releases. It wasn't easy, but I wanted to experience their reimagining of one of my favorite games of all time, how they wanted me to. So, let's jump in and check it out, starting with the gameplay. Before I start chiseling away at Black Mesa, I want to say that although this is a remake of Half-Life, it's not a Half-Life review. I will without a doubt be sharing opinions about Black Mesa that'll inherently speak directly to Half-Life. However, I'll mostly only be covering changes and additions Black Mesa introduces to the game. So keep that in mind because if you jump out of watching this review and go play the original Half-Life and think, what the fuck? <laughs> Some things are just not gonna translate at all. Black Mesa is Half-Life, but it's also not. And I wanna make sure we're clear about that distinction because without a doubt, it differentiates itself significantly and earns its own unique place alongside other titles of this historic franchise. All right, all right, so with that out of the way, let's talk about why. And the biggest changes gameplay-wise, without a doubt, are the completely rebuilt levels from the ground up. Some are close to the original designs, but others are completely redone, less a few key transitional portions that they obviously kept to sustain a sense of truism or familiarity as you progress through the story. The work they did on rebuilding the levels is absolutely badass. Firstly, they removed some of the more tedious sections of the game that either dragged on too long or didn't add to the experience, which made every level flow really nice. And in others, they actually lengthened parts, such as the iconic intro sequence as you ride the Black Mesa tram into work. These additions really capitalized on the already immersive aspects of Half-Life levels and told more of the story by adding to its world. I think they did a superb job here. On top of that, they also added way more detail, better textures, and improved platforming puzzles you encounter as you traverse through its levels. And yo, these were incredible. Firstly, because the movement of your character was really tightened up and made more responsive. Strafing speed feels turned down, and just the overall inertia of your character after you release the movement keys has been balanced out really well in my experience. In Half-Life, it always felt like I was ice skating around versus running, but Black Mesa feels way better here, which made doing the platform puzzles extremely enjoyable. The level designs worked really well with the puzzles too, making them super fun to do. They encouraged exploring, which was always rewarding, and the puzzles themselves were well made to just be challenging enough that it felt like an accomplishment when you finished it, but didn't kill the momentum when you would fail a couple times. And when I say they were rewarding, that doesn't nearly encompass how much fun they were. There were so many sessions I walked away from thinking, damn, I haven't felt straight up joy playing in a game like that in a long time. Hours would go by where I felt this way, and it really tapped into this kind of childlike excitement in me that made me remember why I love playing video games. I honestly wasn't expecting this at all from Black Mesa, but damn, I was glad to receive it. 
All right, so from here, I want to break up the gameplay discussion into two sections. The first being the Black Mesa and Lambda Core section, and then the alien border world Zen. Frankly, I didn't know what to expect with Zen, and as I played through up until that point, I was already super happy with what Crowbar Collective had done with the game. Zen completely surprised me though, and I want to give that some special attention on its own. So let's finish up with the first two thirds of Black Mesa's gameplay first. The new NPC characters they added with all new voice acting lines were incredible. And they added new choreography that tied aspects of the larger Half-Life story that was told in other expansion titles like Blue Shift into Black Mesa, which was also very cool. I thought the overhauled AI was good as well. Enemies that took damage would back off or head for cover. And when it was possible, they would flank. The combat in general stayed true to the fast paced, run and gun style of fighting Half-Life is known for, and I was happy to see it. With the levels having more detail and objects to use for cover, fighting the AI was just straight up cooler as well. I will be honest though, if someone plays this expecting it to compare to a modern AAA game, then for sure the combat will likely be a disappointment. It still feels like an older game when it comes to the combat, but for me, I found it refreshing and Crowbar is a really small team of modders doing some glorious work using the age old source engine that Valve used to build Half-Life 2. The good news here though is that there's so much variety in general between fighting soldiers, head crabs, zombies, and all the other aliens in the game that I always felt entertained as hell and had a great time slaying everything I could. Okay, so let's take a step away from the Black Mesa and Lambda sections and talk about Zen. And holy shit, what they accomplished here is absolute genius and I was not expecting it at all. They redesigned the entire thing, completely reimagining it, and instead of it being a weaker part of the game, like it was for me in the OG Half-Life, it is the freaking highlight. Now, Zen was fun in the original, don't get me wrong. It for sure wasn't a looker, and for sure hasn't aged well in that respect. <laughs> but I'll save that part for the graphics. With gameplay though, Zen in Half-Life was just more of a frustrating experience that wasn't too immersive for me. The levels didn't capture a sense of realism. And what I mean by that is all the different areas, the objects in them, the enemies and the jumping platforms seemed to only be there for the purpose of getting the gamer from one place to the other. Now in the purest sense, that's most games. But Zen and Half-Life didn't make any effort to expand on that by trying to create a place that actually felt like an alien world. When you arrived there, it was just this confusing, weird looking place that made zero sense and felt more like some sort of tech demo area more than anything else. It also told no story that added to the experience in a gripping way in my opinion at least up until you got to one of the two bosses. Now, some of the Half-Life purists out there might be rolling their eyes saying, but Zen is a border world. It's not an actual alien planet. It connects to all the other alien dimensions. And I can't really argue with that. If Zen for you was a better experience than it was for me in the first one, then that's all good. I will say that the boss fights in the original were great. It was just such a strange part of the game for me in general, and I didn't really connect with it. I even reinstalled Half-Life to go back and play the Zen levels just to really remind myself of why I always viewed them as the weaker part of Half-Life 1. <laughs> and yeah, it confirmed what I already thought. Zen in Black Mesa though? <laughs> like I said earlier, holy shit y'all. Comparing Half-Life 1 Zen to Black Mesa Zen? Well, it's not even fair to do so honestly. Zen in Black Mesa has wonderful platforming, great mini puzzles that are designed well into the world. There's a ton of additions that tell you more about the game's story regarding what the scientists were doing there and what happened to them. And most of all, it feels alive, like a true border realm that connects to other dimensions where we might actually encounter alien life forms from other parts of the universe. The moment I set foot on Zen in Black Mesa until the end game, it had a tight grip on me that didn't let go. 
This was also due to the fact that both the chase scenes and boss fights on Zen were absolutely badass. Black Mesa even added in a bit of horror into the gameplay as well. I never felt scared in Half-Life 1, but Black Mesa's Zen actually had an eerie vibe and a few moments that made me anxious. I honestly don't want to spoil anything here because this part of the game was such a treat for me. So I'll just leave it at that, but wow, dare I say the second half of Black Mesa was better than the first. <laughs> Maybe not, but it was at least just as good and totally made the entire game an incredible experience versus falling off a bit near the end like the first one was for me. And with all that said, yo, Black Mesa's gameplay is incredible. Literally, my only complaints are that there's some clipping issues here and there in the game where your character will get stuck on objects in the world when running around. I also would have liked to see the loading screens go away. And I had a few crashes as well, but fortunately those were easily fixed with simply verifying my game files. Other than those minor things, the gameplay is top frickin' notch that totally boosts the original Half-Life experience in every way. Gameplay is getting a 5 out of 5 stars. Graphics are up, and I'm just gonna pop this bubble real quick. The default textures on the highest setting are pretty bad. Black Mesa is built on the Source Engine, which is DX9. And there's something about DX9 that I actually prefer sometimes. Maybe it's just nostalgia, but it has this cleaner, sharper look that's just more immersive to me when combined with extremely good textures. Unfortunately, this is a miss here. I'm sure there'll be some HD texture mod that gets released in the community if there isn't one already, but I would have liked to have seen it in the game. Other than that, Let's be real, y'all. The original Half-Life hasn't aged well. It looks like shit, and since Crowbar Collective designed Black Mesa using a newer Source engine, I knew it was gonna look better no matter what. But yo, it doesn't just look better, it looks way better. They used the same engine Half-Life 2 was built on, so you get all the awesome lighting, reflection, and shadow effects, along with all the physics effects. So picking up, breaking, and throwing items, yes, even pop cans, is possible, which made the game so much more fun and good looking. They even added in more scientist character models, so you don't see the same two dudes running around everywhere. <laughs> you do still run into some that appear to be identical twins, but they even make fun of it in the game, which was cool. All the enemies got a serious visual upgrade as well, and this includes the bosses in the last quarter of the game, which now look really good. There were some areas at both the Black Mesa facility and Lambda Core location that were just beautiful. But when you get to Zen, oh my goodness. Let me tell you, Zen is straight up jaw dropping. It's dark and mysterious with amazing colors. And I felt like I was in space and underwater at the same time. <laughs> there would be aliens flying all around me, making whale-like sounds that cast these gorgeous god rays down across the landscape from the light shining from galaxies far off in space. And it had these really nice floral and canyon-like rock structures that had me stopping and looking around just to appreciate how good it looked. I can't say enough good things about the graphics in Zen. It is a huge accomplishment by Crowbar, and it just straight up looks beautiful now. I'm giving graphics four out of five stars. Audio's up next, and damn, y'all, the soundtrack is so good. The new soundtrack is created by a dude named Joel Nielsen and is straight up banging. Let's check out a couple of tunes. Yo, they totally boosted the gameplay and created a superb vibe with this new soundtrack. I couldn't have been more happy with it. Crowbar Collective also completely did all the sound effects, less some of the OG classics that had to be in there, of course. All the new shit was excellent, though. 
the added voice acting in the game was great too. You'll still hear plenty of the traditional nerdy scientists, but they also brought in some voice actors to actually drop some good quality acting lines, which was very cool. Without a doubt, audio is getting a five out of five stars. Story's up next, and if you've never played a Half-Life game, you play as Gordon Freeman, who's a theoretical physicist working at the Black Mesa Research Facility. On what starts out as a normal day to the office, you end up becoming the protagonist in an interdimensional sci-fi adventure where your entire research base gets overrun by aliens that you end up battling against along with your own government soldiers who end up trying to kill every scientist and worker at the facility, including you, to try and bury the entire drama. <laughs> and either you know what happens next or you don't. In which case, shame on you. You go buy it now and find out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Seriously, why the fuck haven't you played it? Go buy it right All now. All right, next up, I'll just quickly say that Crowbar Collective's additions to the story were excellent. They subtly added to its world and characters in a way that doesn't betray the original story, but boosts it in cool ways. And they even incorporated lore from other game titles in the franchise, like I mentioned. They took an amazing classic story that sets up the world of Half-Life and completely fine-tuned it with a new paint job to boot. Story is getting a 5 out of 5 stars. Alright, settings are up, and let's start with Key Rebinds, which were all great except for one thing. I was able to get WSAD and ESDF rebound with no issue, however I just couldn't get the enter key on the numpad to bind at all. Sometimes games just have this issue and I'm not sure why, but other than that, everything was all good here. Graphic and video settings are next, which had no issues at all. There's a ton of options to choose from, and down at the very bottom, you'll even find some additional advanced settings if you really want to push it, which of course I did, and it ran really well with zero performance issues. So if you need to tweak it for any reason, there's plenty of options here for you. Audio settings are up and everything was great here. You get your master sound effect and music dials. And on top of that, there's source selections for headphone or speaker configurations, which was cool. Last up is the gameplay settings, which is only missing colorblind mode options. And a quick note here too, if you're looking for mouse sensitivity options, those are actually located under input. And if you're looking for different language captioning, you'll find a bunch of those in the audio tab. So with only a couple misses here, I'm giving settings four out of five stars. All right, it's final score time. And I have one word for you, and that is joy. Pure freaking joy. <laughs> Crowbar Collective took a legend and one of my favorite games of all time and made it a modern experience that is absolutely a must play. I'm giving Black Mesa 5 out of 5 stars. Half-Life was already amazing and Black Mesa not only capitalizes on all its brilliance, it also takes all of its weaker aspects and turns them into beautiful highlights. I cannot recommend this game enough. It was like reliving the experience that Half-Life gave me two decades ago. And it was always a big jump going from Half-Life 1 to Half-Life 2 due to the engine that Valve used to develop it and just the age. But Black Mesa totally modernizes it, smoothing it out, making a badass transition from one to the other even better in some ways. So if you're a fan of Half-Life or, well, you know what? Actually, no matter what type of gamer you are, I think you should go play Black Mesa. It's a historic addition to a historical franchise and is perfect for Half-Life fans or first timers. So go check it out and experience what the joy of gaming is really like. All right, that's it, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with me today. You could have been anywhere on YouTube, but you kicked it here, and I appreciate you so much. Please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. I would love to hear from you, and I will see you on the next Kerms Garage. GG.
do this before I lose my nerve. Freeze! Whoa, whoa, hold your fire! Jackson? Good God, man, how many lives do you have? <laughs> None if it wasn't for my new buddy here. Hey, buzz us in, will you? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Holy shit. Uh, not bad, huh? Not bad. You hit the mother load. <laughs> what can I say? I got expensive taste. Well, damned if I'm not glad to see a familiar face. <laughs>